amigos, you're watching Cole the Corn Star. Hoy es muy importante. We got the Pell guys out spreading some Pell lime out in the fields, building up our pH levels so that way we're not so acidic in the soil. They're off running out doing that. Dad's loading up beans over at Kristen and Rusty's. And uh, we bought a new sprayer. Before we talk about this guy, is Cooper tried to annihilate all the mosquitoes on planet Earth or what? <laughs> What is going on in here? Look at that. <laughs> you can't even see in there. Holy. <coughs> careful, careful, careful. Don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. Oh, did you get them all? Get what? The mosquitoes? Well, if there's any surviving in our county, I'd be surprised. Something about those old 1980s 903 Cummins, when you start them up, they just smoke like the bandit, and then after 15 minutes, they're fine. Just. Initial startup, doesn't matter if it's 125 degrees out or 10 degrees out. Smoke. Oh, wait for that big machine shed to de-smoke. We need to make room in here inside the heated shop for the other sprayer, so that way it doesn't freeze outside. We got this tank of death sitting in here. It doesn't really need to be sitting in here because this is empty. Hola, pedal. Hola. Hola. <laughs> yes, mom got me loaded breakfast burritos. What do we got here? My TS 329R50. Got about 1,000 acres on them or so. Maybe. Maybe about 1,500. Not a whole lot. Basically brand new. What do you want to start the bidding off at? They're 2708. They're 2700 a piece? Yes, sir. Shoot. I get a fifteen hundred dollar bid and anybody bid fifteen hundred dollar. Anybody bid fifteen hundred dollar. Anybody, 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 hey, sixteen hundred. Since the big machine shed is still a nuclear war zone. We got the old duels that were on the 7140. We're just running singles on it now for the hay stuff. Take that back. One of them is now just a wheel. And then the other one still got the rubber on the wheel. We're going to bring those up to the building to the north. So Cooper's just going to run them up there as faster and loading it up on the trailer. Hopefully, hopefully when we get back, that's kind of aired out a little bit. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. The shed's working out really nice. We got harvest stuff in the back. Got the bush mower, we got the tree puller, we got our extra tire supply, we got the extra Wisconsin engine for our groundhogs if we ever need that. And we got seed tenders. Oh, you are so cute. You are so cute. Need my gloves. Thank you. Ah, that's a lot better. Since the late 1980s until last year, we used this building as a grain storage. So it was basically a big grain bin. We'd fill it. Almost just touching the rafters actually would touch that auger running right along the center of the ceiling And then the corn would go all the way up to right where the tin starts So there would be about 120,000 bushels of corn in this entire building if you filled it end to end We're not going to use this as a flat storage building anymore. So we can take down these augers That's what we're going to do right now And hopefully we can back stuff in here a little easy because if you got something tall like that trailer it hits this auger right now, so it kind of eliminates us being able to use this corner. I think if we drop this end, it should pull it this way. We'll put the telehandler there and the skiller over there. Detour. Hola, semi rojo. Como se dice semi in espanol? Beep, beep! Beep, beep! Beep, beep! We gotta get the air leak fixed on this semi. You shut it off for five minutes, completely runs out of air. Oh yeah, we full. Well, the weather's nice, meaning it's not all muddy, slimy, slushy, or four foot deep of snow all the way through here. We decided we're just gonna get these bins over at Kristen and Rusty's empty because they're always like a March project when it's super slimy, cruddy, four feet of snow, wind blowing, terrible conditions. I live right over on the horizon, right on the other side of that wind turbine. You can see the bins set up on the horizon. It's just a mile and a half over here. It's a little more handling around of the beans, but it actually, it's a lot nicer doing it right now than when we normally do it. And then also, you're actually kind of excited to do it when the weather's nice versus when it's not. It also serves a little bit of double fold because now we will also won't have to come over here during the winter time with the snow plow to get all this stuff cleaned out, which this driveway is a quarter mile long. And then around the bends there, sometimes you can be here for several hours. Good to see Dad's left some clues to tell us that he's been over here. Fifty 
15 minutes that bench should be empty, then I think there's five semi loads left in that one. Kelly's up here. <laughs> that dog can climb. Right, come on. Yeah, girl. You want a taco? No, I'm okay. okay. We got one here if you want. Oh, what are you doing earlier? Hey, Kelly, you hungry? You want a rock? There you go. Good girl. Don't break your teeth. Dad's got his glasses in here. You gotta be very careful with those. Once we get those bins vacked out over at Kristen and Rusty's, it's going to be so nice. We're just going to be able to pull under an auger with the semi. Just turn everything on. No more green vacs. Once we end up getting that auger down, I think we're going to try sticking the Massey 4840 and the real disc in the back corner. The real disc needs a little bit of work that needs done to it. And we're going to try to also get this other disc of ours in the back of the machine shed. It doesn't need to be sitting out, getting a bunch of rain and stuff in the bearings, making them wear out prematurely. And then Ronnie, our trucker, he bottled red. Got the auger out just in time, Dad called. Or he sent a text message of a picture of the fuel gauge on the auger. He's about out of diesel. We figured while we're over there, that bin's just about empty. We might as well just bring this stuff to clean it out, get it all swept up so it's done. Otherwise, it's the 19th of September, and you remember you have seven bushels still on the floor in there that you gotta get picked up, and then nobody wants to do it. Five gallons should get them by just fine. Our white barrel has our winter blend in it, so it has anti-gelling agents in there so you can operate the diesel in colder weather because the normal farm diesel, when it gets cold, it starts to crystallize and they call that gelling up. And then your fuel line freezes and that's essentially like running your vehicle out of fuel. What are you doing? Are you licking my finger? Good, I want to wash my hands later. Thank you, thank you. You're so kind, you're so kind. You're so kind. Coop's just gonna meet Dad and I over at Kristen and Rusty's because Isaiah's pulling in for a load of corn. Hey, chickens, get out of the road! That's what I thought. Chickens! Scoop all this back and clean that out too. for nine years and I had no idea there was concrete right there until now. How neat is that? Pero! Pero! A key! A key! Ah, Pero Española! All the doughs hanging out over there then we look on the pile. <laughs> Little spiker. You're in the wrong spot there buddy. <laughs> Turn around. I'd say the flighting on that had a couple years left on her. Oh yeah. Easy. Definitely a straight auger too. No bend in it at all. Totally an eight inch auger still as well. Big drop, big drop, big drop! Ooh. I think this auger has been in the big machine shed running grain through it since 1986. So it's probably ran at least 80,000 bushels a year through it for 30 years. 
We're gonna leave this auger up here for now just because that's a big honker and it's gonna take a little bit of torching probably to get that bad guy down. I don't even remember how we put that thing up there. Very carefully is all I can say. But we're gonna take this little one down right here. We need to be very careful because if that falls on our spare trailer, it's gonna crush a tank. It could crush the mix meat, which would be that. That was violent. New box crusher. There's a couple little flaws in the model, but it, sometimes you gotta use the extension on the front of it. There we go. Works good. As we can tell by how dark it is, it just passed 3.30 in the afternoon. And Ronnie's here. There's one load of beans left over at Kristen and Rusty's. So we just emptied one load out of that. That was full. So now there's room for one load in there. Dad's got a full load on the red Volvo right now. So we're going to dump that up into the overhead and tomorrow Cooper and I are going to be able to get that last load of beans out of Kristen Rusty's. Kristen Rusty's bins will all be cleaned out. And then all of our beans will be up in the overhead here and in the semi. So then once we get another thousand bushels opened here, we'll be able to fill that. And then all the Kristen and Rusty beans will be able to fill right from here. I've been making everybody wait all day. Here she is, her new sprayer, a 2005 Haggy STS-10, which is the exact same as we already have. We've owned this sprayer since 2009. It has about 3,500 hours on it. We use it for all of our corn spraying, all of our bean spraying, and then all of our nitrogen applications and fungicide applications for the corn. I spent half of June and all of July inside of that thing, which comes out to about 300 hours. And at the 4,000 hour mark on these particular sprayers, these drive hubs right here tend to go out. Which basically means at the 4,000 hour mark, we should probably be looking into getting a different sprayer. So basically, we are two seasons away from getting a different sprayer. So I'm sitting there the other night scrolling through auctions, just seeing what's coming up at for the end of the year estate sales or retirement sales. And then boom, this guy falls right into our lap. So it's got a little drippy drippy going on there. Where's that coming from? Check this thing out. The decal's not even peeled off of the side. I've hardly been sitting in the sun. It has no rust on the wheels at all. I mean, just look at the boom. There's hardly even any rust on that. This machine has not seen a lot of tall corn, otherwise all the paint would just be pulled right off this. It's been in a little bit, but not a lot at all, not compared to ours. I mean, even down here, this should just be all shiny metal by now if you're running through a lot of tall corn. Same with up there. There's no scratches on this bottom belly plate at all, and this front part is not cracked out whatsoever. I don't think this has had any 32% nitrogen spilling over the tank rusting this out. If it did, this would all be cracked, super rusty, but it's not. We had a little bit of an inside deal on it because we knew about this machine before we knew about this machine because our sprayer mechanic actually worked on this one as well. So we know it's history, we know it's how it's been taken care of, and we know what work's been done to it. Which on these sprayers, those can sometimes crack out, which these guys drove like six miles an hour, so don't have to worry about that at all. These cylinders that lift the boom, they'll eventually get a leak in them, they'll start to settle. That's why they have these blocks in here just in case they do settle, but those ones are holding up. These drive hubs will go out sometimes at 2,500 hours, sometimes at 4,000 hours. This one has not had any problems. And then there is a hose down here that can sometimes go out. The coolant hose, the exhaust manifold way up inside of there will sometimes get a crack in it. The cradle that holds the bottom of the tank right here and right there will also crack out if you spill a lot of 32% and it'll cause this to rust. And then it'll crack it right here. If you don't keep the radiators clean on them, they will actually start to rust out even though they're aluminum. It'll just start to oxidize in there and then you'll get eventually get little pinholes then you have to get a new radiator. This one looks extremely clean inside of there. The inside of these leg towers, there's a bushing on the top and there's a bushing on the bottom. When those go up and down, it eventually wears that nylon bushing out and it will start to eat into the leg. Jordan redid these front ones a couple years ago, so they should be good for a long, long time yet. The back ones may need it eventually, but the front ones take a whole lot more wear because it turns inside of here when you turn the front wheels, so this gets a lot more abuse while the back ones just go up and down. These airbags will eventually get worn out and will blow out. But other than that, I mean, these are pretty stinking 
solid machines. I just can't get over how clean this thing is. That That's just barely peeling off. Ours is like completely gone. But that right there, that's a telltale sign. This thing never drove on the ground. Otherwise, this hose wouldn't be here anymore. And then to the booms, not all beat up, dented up, scratched hardly. Inside of the cab, door open is pretty much immaculate. I need to figure out who they use for their interior because they redid this, they reupholstered it, but they did a really nice job. The whole ceiling reupholstered as well. It's just clean in here. Really clean. Seats are not all tore up. I don't know what else to say. It's clean. So now instead of having two years of life left on ours, we'll be able to split the hours between the two of them. We should have four years of life with the other one. A new sprayer. Really not a whole lot different than what we have here. Maybe just a little bit fancier technology, a little fancier monitors, that kind of thing. But for like a 2200 hour sprayer, you're looking at like $300,000, where this was like a third of that. When we have both of them going in a good field, we should be able to do 100 acres per hour per machine. So technically speaking, we could spray 1,000 acres in five hours. We'll just say a day. Spray 1,000 acres a day. Cooper running around following us at the sprayer trailer, keeping us supplied with product. Dad and the other sprayer. Ooh, I'm liking this combination. There she is. That is the new addition on the farm. Got another sprayer. But with that, this video is effectively over. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next one.